The dreaded scrapper is a fierce beast. It's known for eating everything and worrying about shitting it out later. It's oh sweet Jesus. Sit back my friends and imagine a game where you're a decked out cavewoman wearing the parts of creatures you've smashed off of them like some kind of rebellious Walmart shopper beating the crap out of store mannequins and owning whatever broke off of them. Not exciting enough? Well add to that that you're doing this all while being chased down a rocky cliff by a murderous robotic turkey that looks like it stole the front end off a Dyson bladeless fan and then glued a CPU overclocking kit to it. That my friends is the first like 30 minutes of Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a game that has you play as Aloy, exploring a mysterious land filled with robot dinosaurs that are so scary they don't even need to transform. And this game already succeeded in 2017 when it came out for the PS4. It comes out this week for the PC on Steam and the Epic Game Store. It's for $49.99. That includes Horizon Zero Dawn as well as the expansion. Also, thanks to Sony for a review code for this game. As you guys know, I don't do reviews that are two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. So that means when I get a code, even from the devs, I go out and get a code myself. I'll be giving that away to somebody who watches watches the video, so my hard-earned cash is on the line, just like yours. Let's begin. Graphics are up first. Now, I do have to say, Sony have a day one patch that's supposed to go live prior to you guys getting this. I'll update this review in the first comment if anything changes, as this specifically does hit on one point I did have, but doesn't change the score. It was noticeable, and I'll talk about that. I like to imagine that when Horizon Zero Dawn was created, it was just some designer sitting back watching Clan of the Cave Bear, and someone said, you know what this needs? A fine layer of neon and fire. Horizon Zero Dawn shows how much art design and world design matter, even when compared to cold, hard technical elements of games and their designs. While it was no slouch on the PS4 at 30 FPS, it's excellent to finally unleash the beast and allow Horizon to sort of stretch its scaly little legs and show some of the work at a higher fidelity and frame rate than was ever possible on the PS4 or the Pro. Horizon excels in many places. The world that Aloy and her friends and enemies encounter is one of captivating use of scale and color, from the soaring mountains you climb precariously to perch with these robotic passerine that watch over the lands of robot dinosaur kind, or if you're just creeping stealthily through the crimson top vegetation that rings a valley floor as you skirt past a group of chargers that have claimed that place as their own. What many other games handle with a rough hand and a lack of subtlety that equals green grass is grown right up to the side of a blizzard whitened field, Horizon layers out with a comforting smoothness that makes the entire world feel far far more natural in every transition. Location changes have a natural extension of the weather types and the environments that you explore from waist deep snow in the frozen wilds to the swampy mercs that a massive human built city seems to strive to escape from by building, well, straight up. World building is hard. You can't just plop a bunch of buildings down on a bunch of NPCs and think it's gonna come together, but Horizon Zero Dawn doesn't do that. It captures the feeling of both nature at its finest, returning that world to a balance that's been lost centuries before due to the story elements, and somehow mixes it with, well, robotic dinosaurs without actually appearing for the most parts comical. Because it is robot dinosaurs. There are few things as cool as dinosaur robots, maybe ninjas and pirates or pirate ninjas with robots or robotic ninjas in a pirate ship with 1980s rock bands just wailing away in the background as they sail the universe. It's not like dinosaurs aren't menacing all by themselves. They already encapsulate this special place in our lizard core brain that's like a walking turn and run away sign. They are a couple tons of scaly, pure mayhem that happen to grow teeth just because Mother Nature saw it and thought, you know what, let's make that even more scary. And the devs basically took that and added to it ramshackle constructed out of disused circus parts and strapped on explosive fluids and scary ass saw blades and somehow made dinosaurs that look like they belong. Horizon's creature designs take specific dinosaur archetypes and merge them and creates these new ones that are both alien but ultimately a bit familiar. For example, you might see rampaging horde stags with huge canisters of explosives rigged to their backs because obviously that's the safest place to put explosives. Or swimming alligator machines with armored scaling and mysterious technology humming away in their bellies that also lets them spit freezing fluids at you. Each looks just familiar enough to make you think, you know what? I sort of remember seeing that from grade school, but then they envelop you in a shock ray that stuns you and warps the entire field of view. And if you live through it, you spend a good deal of your time running away thinking, nope, I probably didn't see that. We've seen so many games with excellent designs where something always feels off with the world and the creatures that inhabit it. Now, a good deal of that is mastering the perceived weight of the characters and creatures in the game world and making them feel like they're affected in the same way the player is. It enforces that feeling of mass and, well, massiveness. Even the smaller scout and recon creatures move with a connection to the world in Horizon Zero Dawn. I've never been attacked by a robot chicken with an eye of the storm electronic globe for an eye, but I assume it looks pretty much exactly like this. 
If you watch the GDCs, you can see a lot of the different animations that they took from real creatures and pattern them into the robots here. It works wonders to make everything feel organic. Now, speaking of apocalyptic chicken destruction, Horizon's destruction system, where you piece apart the dinosaurs and wear their parts, helps add to this feeling of everything in the game world subtly being connected. Explosions detonate with force, beams of electricity crackle around you as parts explode off the machine, and they shower down around you, and everything has a multi-layered feel to it. But it's not just that, it's also that Horizon is a visual yardstick for color work and animation that informs the gamer of state changes in enemies. Horizon also goes that extra step to make everything feel and everyone feel like they're a part of the game world, whether it's a tribe's unique way of dressing or just some item within the game world. One thing though, if there's anything the game is missing, it's extra layers of facial animation, and that's noticeable throughout. Here, anger is usually translated as someone just speaking by really squinting hard at somebody else. It's a step down from, say, Resident Evil and fair like that, but it doesn't overly hurt the game. Animation, special effects, and just the way everything comes together really does elevate Horizon Zero Dawn. That brings us to performance. Well, the game has a number of graphical options and settings you can choose from for shadows, resolution, render, level of detail, and more. I wish I had a couple more because the game's performance is not necessarily amazing. And this is, of course, prior to that particular patch. On a current i7 at 4.7 and a 2080 Ti, 1440p with all the settings at maximum was always above 60 FPS. There was a noticeable amount of pop in though that you could see in far off details. Now, that doesn't matter what resolution you're at, and that is a setting I would love to see added to this particular engine because it was something that happened in the PS4 version as well. A 1080 or a 1080 Ti would easily get you 1080p and there is a noticeable bug at 4K that they said was going to be patched when it comes to performance. And while the game doesn't have DLSS support, it does have unlocked FPS as well as ultra wide display settings that you can choose. Now, while this performance and these issues don't paint a perfect picture, Horizon is for the most part a stunning looking game. It's requisite attention to color and design is a thing to behold, offering this world that feels like no other and not since maybe Far Cry Blood Dawn as a game so utterly awed me in terms of just pure eye glitz even if it did come with some caveats. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. But what does that have to do with where I was born? My hope is... everything. do voice first. It's true that sometimes Aloy can straight up just remove the frivolity of the novelty of living in a world where robotic condors with jet intakes on their wings hang out on rocky outcroppings, just, you know, chilling. Her delivery can run from emotional to dry, and while it's a vessel for the player to experience this world, this is added to the fact that Aloy herself hasn't traveled out of the valley much, and aside from the occasional, wow, this is awesome, she exudes wanderlust a little bit like John Wick exudes fear. It doesn't temper your own experience that much. Nevertheless, it is noticeable. Most of the side characters and NPCs are fine in Zero Dawn, running from excellent to what the hell were they thinking. When compared to the other elements, I would say it probably feels the most uneven of these categories, if only because when Lance Riddick starts to extrapolate the additional policies of the story, you sit up and realize just how good he is. I can only assume that when Lance was born, the first thing he did was read a poem about being awesome. Lip syncing is unchanged from the original game, and that means things can look a little bit rough. Aloy stands there with huge eyes and this astonished look on her face when someone is explaining the prices of a trader stall. It's just one of the places where Horizon does show its age, and did even back then. And that brings us to music. Horizon Zero Dawn and Frozen Land's music has this unique mix of heady, full-throated orchestral tracks that are also layered in with a surprising amount of ambient layers that plays throughout. And these sort of trade places as you're actually playing, but they trade places in a more organic way than I think a lot of other games actually handle. But this is a game where a pilgrimage to a desert fort might encompass these rousing string sections that fade into a deceptively low frequency bass underpinning. 
then that'll transform into this rousing battle music as the edge too close to a creature's hunting grounds. It's a mix of expected instruments as well as more than a little experimentation and sustained note woodwinds during exploration give everything this almost Legend of Zelda kind of feel at different times. I like the experimentation that went on with the music here as well as the traditional stuff that we'd all expect. And that brings us to sound. Yeah, so Horizon Zero Dawn sound work, it, this just shows pure prowess on the audio team from the start to the end. And the way sound passes across the landscape is second to none. It shows that Horizon, when it originally came out, was lauded for its exemplary audio for a reason. You'll be running down a ravine and you hear this booming sound and it'll start rhythmically playing. You'll realize the ground is shaking and that sound echoes out around you and down through the valley as some Colossal robotic thingamajig comes down out of the rocks, each footstep a little bit like nature's heartbeat, sequence in the tempo for your doom, except in Horizon Zero Dawn, BPM doesn't stand for beats per minute, it stands for bitch pedal more as you leap on your robot retreat cycle and motor out of there. Sound is incredibly important when it comes to informing the gamer of the environment, circling around enemies even without seeing them or setting traps even without knowing exactly where they are is something you will find yourself doing in Horizon Zero Dawn. Like the original though, it does have a couple small issues. One of those is that sometimes a person's gonna call out for help and they'll sound like they're right in front of you and you'll find out that they're like two hills beyond. The sound of their voice is just unnaturally carrying. Strangely, this does not seem to happen with the creature sounds and this is something that I noticed on the original. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Horizon Zero Dawn takes place thousands of years after humanity has seen a stunning collapse of civilization. How or what starts out is pretty much unimportant as you are introduced to Aloy and her protector Rost, both outcasts from their tribe for an unknown reason. Now as you progress through the story and you begin to uncover more about Aloy and her background, you also begin to unearth the mysterious happenings that brought about the downfall of mankind and the rise of machines that inhabit the land. Almost instantly, you're thrust into this native world, with Aloy learning skills from combat and exploration and quest making as she traipses across the 40 plus hours of the combined story, taking on quests, exploring the land, collecting items in the game world, and occasionally caveman Batman detectivizing a murder or two. Combat is a mix of using weaponry as well as the landscape to help you take down ever larger prey as you move forward. Now, as you level up Aloy, you pick from a series of skills to add to your repertoire, soon gaining the ability to attack enemies from above or below, or knocking two or three or four arrows into the boat any one time, or slowing down time when aiming, Robin Hooding your way through the best of them. To be fair, most of Horizon Zero Dawn's basic trappings are not that original. It doesn't really shake the ground when it comes to how you interact with the skills and the systems in the game, and those skills aren't really revolutionary, that is for sure. Where Horizon excels is the unique worldview it presents and the organic way in which it's reflected across both the visual and exploration aspects. From battle-hardened warriors sitting on thrones made from court out centers of creatures that you recognize, to the way the game's religions harken back to a cause and effect kind of worship that happens when no one understands what the hell is going on. Each machine has a job, and while mysterious at first, you slowly begin to piece together everyone and everything's place in this cycle of life. You have hobo robotic crabs with massive storage bins on their back, and they collect organic samples in the field to be used by machines in other locations. You have tall necks who slowly traipse around the landscape, climbable machine zebra towers, from which Aloy can then discover more of the game world. A world that, while years past its expiration date, still holds a lot of traces of the past, and that reflection is something you see. Now, stealth works at its most basic here in gameplay, with particular locations and grasses being useful for Aloy as places she can hide, and also use various tactics to fool enemies away from or towards her as she needs. Regardless of which, for the most part, you're probably going to be having them come towards you. Aloy can use every part of the enemies anyway, which sees you running around smashing the machines to bits and wearing their pieces, or aiming at particular parts which has a higher chance of dropping unique scrap. This is where the game forcibly channels a Monster hunter light kind of feeling to it, with weaknesses and strengths to elements playing out depending on the creatures and their locations. To add a layer of strategy though, Horizon uses something that I really like, and that's that most enemies have a particular location that if destroyed or targeted with a particular type of elemental attack, does a huge area of effect explosion. For example, if you punch through the chest of a robotic chicken and puncture the canisters inside and that piece explodes, it sends out a shockwave that stuns other enemies in the group, turning animals into weird mobile weapons that 
Well, still look like animals, but you get my point. Even without a true lock on and using either the mouse and keyboard or the controller, it's not hard to figure out ways to lead groups together and use your enemy's weaknesses as your own strength. You're consistently exploring the world, finding new humans to get quests from, discovering new parts of the culture, and thereby new places to explore, and new creatures or story snippets to grab a hold of. All the while, you're just looking at that next fire pit that you can see on the map thinking, you know what, I can make it. It's not all killing though. Sometimes on missions, Aloy will have to use her honed ability to track as well as the device that inescapably is tied to the technology of the past world, occasionally helping other villagers, at times others tracking down different enemies and more often than not getting into battles along the way. The question is though, did Horizon make the jump to PC with all of the positives of additional hardware and fidelity of movement or did it bring along some baggage for the trip? It does have some issues and we do need to talk about them. First is mouse and keyboard and the user interface, which is not a Amazing. The game uses a radius dial for weapon switching, and while the circle sounds simple, I mean, it's a basic shape. Once you throw four weapons on that circle, each that shoots different ammo, and then see how easy it is to try to craft together fire arrows when a Dinobot is rampaging behind you, vomiting frozen globs of something at your back as you're sliding down a rocky outcropping. Trying to finesse one choice from a possible eight or more that can appear is never really the easiest. With mouse and keyboard, it may be easier due to the level of fidelity when actually aiming, but you should remember that every weapon has a handling ability, meaning a well-placed arrow can still shoot very wide if you have a low stat for that weapon. So so when it comes to control, I would say mouse and keyboard does help a bit, but it's not the ace in the hole. Also, the entire inventory system is just sort of a mess. You know it must be an issue when it's brought up at multiple GDCs by the developers themselves. For example, upgrades to ammo carrying and item carrying are all separate, even though they aren't really visually any different. Upgrading each item is a chore as you have to go into each one separately, and it gets cumbersome figuring out which one you actually need. Resources for crafting, which you get from killing creatures, is also overly complex for what they're doing, with items having really odd descriptors, which can make understanding what you should and should and keep really confusing. In fact, many times it feels a bit like an MMO with some items sold for scrap and nothing else. Other scrap items traded to merchants that the game warns you about before you ever meet them, causing you to hold on to everything like a reverse Santa carrying a sack across the land. Other items that you can sell, but they're pieced out awkwardly in the inventory. At some point, you're probably going to be just like me and say, screw it, I'm keeping everything just in case, which then leads you to have to upgrade your resource carrying capability, which is strangely not connected to your other items carrying capability. It's not horrible. It's just complex and cumbersome for no real reason. Also, while the game does have a number of weapons and types like casters, which you can use to put trip lines in the game world where enemies hit them and set off traps, you also just have normal traps, which you can lay pretty much anywhere. Then you have your bow, your sniper bow, and your heavy bow, which also has a various make and model from different tribes or even rarer ones. This can be augmented like armor with various augments you find around the game world, but it's not unusual to have three bows in your pack with one hot swappable and find a spot where you really sort of needed the one that's just sitting in your inventory. It feels like a bit of overlap. Lastly, the AI. I test games on all difficulties from easy to hard to see how it all feels. First, the AI in the game doesn't really utilize new movements or techniques depending on difficulty. It's mostly purely hit points and damage based. And while the machines themselves are always enjoyable to take out and have a tendency to easily attract others, which can turn a normal hunting expedition into a traversal through the bowels of a robot lizard, the human AI continues to be the weak spot. While the dinosaurs are leaping over your traps and flanking you and basically worrying less about discrete hazards, more about that age old question, how many of these fat cave people can I fit in my mouth right now? The humans never really offer a great challenge, but how does all that come together? And that brings us to fun factor. Horizon Zero Dawn doesn't really completely change anything about the open world third person action game genre. What it does is it offers an enticing story and some of the coolest monsters and environments in a game. And battle against those monsters is awesome. It's got a mostly excellent graphical presentation and a story with some real world parallels that I found interesting. It comes together more than the sum of its parts. And basically you're smashing a bunch of dinosaurs like a damn Jenga puzzle anyway, which is also a blast. It has its issues, but it is a pure lesson in childhood come to life. It's a pleasure to take down a giant robot with a couple hit points left, using traps to lure them, then their own weaknesses to take out additional machines that might creep up in the meantime. And then you see that explosion of sparkling parts as they pinata out around you in wearable items. It is a beautiful game to explore. It's a tremendous world to discover. And I didn't mention this, but I forgot. You can also ride the dinosaurs. Well, some of them. You can't ride them all. That's probably for the sequel. Horizon Zero Dawn 2. The shit just got realer. 
And speaking of real, that brings us to the rating. As you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC titles, if that's the rating I give it. So taking into account, this is a $49 game and includes the normal game and the expansion. I still think it's worth it despite some of those performance issues, especially at 4K. This is something that they said there's a patch coming. I'll inform you guys in the first comment. I think the performance isn't absolutely amazing, but certainly at 1440p and below it seemed to run fine. And that apparently is a particular glitch for the 4K gaming. I still was able to run it at 4K and get solid FPS, but it was not as solid as I would want. What I did get to do though, is just absolutely have a blast. Horizon has a composure that lacks in many other titles where some open world games have this almost innate irritability whenever nothing is happening on screen. Horizon has a bit more of a sedate feel. It's no Ghost of Tsushima, far from it, but it's a bit more even-handed and judicious when it comes to its allotment of encounters, even with that long draw distance. And a world that's just chock full of terraforming terror bots, it makes it feel like something I want to continue to explore. It gathers everything together, the mystical, the mayhem, the robots, the neon, and puts it in a package that is really enjoyable. So that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Patreon. You know, as times go on, everything's demonetized. YouTube's absolute crap. Hell, TikTok might even be banned from what they say. I would love for you guys to come by Discord. It helps more than you know. Another way that you can enjoy a little bit of ACG is check out the swag. That'll come up at the end of this video. You should see it now. These are different designs that I'll be doing based on games that I've really enjoyed. These were inspired by Ghost of Tsushima. You should see those. There'll be a couple probably inspired by Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Just things that captivate me and remind me of the way that we might play these games. Every single one of the shirts has some kind of design or element that indicates the way a person might play it, whether it be a tank or a cleric or a fighter or a paladine, but all named and designed based around the game world itself versus the typical archetypes we may see. So anyway, that's it for me. Hope you guys like the video. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.